everyone welcome to unpack with dr atar parveen and today we are going to discuss some important questions from the topic structural organization in animals to prepare for the karnataka tet 2022 examination why we chose this topic structural organization in animals is because in last year karnataka tet paper one question was asked from this chapter what was this question let's look into this question what is it asking in this figure the tissue which shows rhythmic contraction and relaxation throughout life without undergoing fatigue is let me explain this question to you in simple language so what he is asking is there is some tissue in our body and that tissue in our body is showing regular rhythmic means regular contraction and relaxation throughout life without getting tired undergoing fatigue means getting tired if we work a lot we get tired right but there is a muscle which doesn't get tired and it works continuously so what muscle it is let's look into the options smooth muscle tissue striated muscle tissues cardiac muscle tissues and epithelium tissues now if you look into the question he is saying contraction and relaxation right so the contraction and relaxation movement is only shown by muscles of our body so fourth option will be the wrong answer because it is not a muscle now if you look into these remaining three options which are smooth muscle tissues cardiac muscle tissues and striated muscle tissues the correct answer is cardiac muscle tissues why cardiac muscle tissue is the answer because cardiac muscle tissue if you look into it its structure it has a lot of blood capillaries means it is a highly vascularized tissue highly vascularized tissue means there will be a lot of blood capillaries those blood capillaries will have blood in them and we know blood is the carrier of oxygen to the cells they carry oxygen right and oxygen is required to work continuously without getting tired so this is one of the reasons then next we have uh, is uh, it has a lot of mitochondria in it so mitochondria we know that uh, it is the power house of the cell right so again it provides energy to the tissue to work continuously next again uh, we have uh, the reason that it is rich in cytoplasm so what happens if it's rich in cytoplasm you'll ask if cytoplasm is present uh, there will be a lot of nutrients in this cytoplasm so that nutrients uh, will be given to these cells uh, of uh, cardiac muscle tissues then again it can work continuously then last again uh, reason why it is working continuously we have is it is having a lot of glycogen so why glycogen glycogen is actually a stored form of energy in our body so this glycogen will again give cardiac muscle tissue energy to work continuously so these all are the four reasons why the cardiac muscle tissues works continuously without undergoing fatigue okay let's look at the other questions so these are some important questions that in some way or the other might be asked in this year's karnataka tet exam let's look into this question so the first question we have is dash is a mirocrine gland so what are mirocrine glands so mirocrine glands are those glands like for example think this is a gland okay this gland will store some substances okay these substances are released outside from this gland without damaging its any of the cells means the cells that these glands will have are not damaged when this substance that it is secreting are released outside okay so those type of glands are called mirocrine glands then how are the substances going outside of the glands they are going outside by simple diffusion okay we can call it as simple diffusion or some may even call it as exocytosis exo 
exocytosis. So what is this exocytosis? Exocytosis means it is going outside of the cell. Okay. It is going outside of the cell without damaging these cells of the glands. Okay. Such type of gland is known as the neurocrine glands. So the options we have is first option is pineal gland. Pineal gland is actually an endocrine gland. Okay. And this is found in the brain pineal gland. It is an endocrine gland, but so it is not the answer. Next option we have is sebaceous gland. Sebaceous gland is actually an exocrine gland. Okay, but we want a mirocrine, right? So this is also not the answer. Next we have this salivary gland. So salivary gland is actually a mirocrine gland. So it releases the substance that is secreting. It is a salivary gland, right? So it is secreting saliva and this saliva is released from this gland without damaging any of its cells. Okay. So it is a mirocrine gland. Answer is salivary gland. And some other examples of mirocrine gland can be we have a sweat gland. Okay. Then again we have a goblet cells. Then uh, what else we have? Uh, we have tears. Uh, we have lacrimal glands for tears, right? So these all are mirocrine glands. Okay. Next, second question. Antigens are typically found in. Options are given as first option plasma, second option cell surface, third option nuclear membrane and fourth option none of the above. So what are these antigens? These antigens are actually found on the cell surface of pathogens. Okay. Cell surface of pathogens. Now pathogens we have like bacteria, viruses and fungi. If these enter into our body, they are harmful for, for our body, right? The body should fight these. So, in order to fight these and destroy these pathogens, our body produces antibodies. So, what makes these pathogens harmful is because of these antigens present on their cell surface. And to fight these antigens, our body produces antibodies. The immune response of our body comes into play. So, antibodies are produced. By our, by our body and antigens are destroyed. So the answer is the cell surface. Third question we have is dash is the enzyme needed for muscle contraction. It is present in myosin. So myosin and actin these are all a type of muscle fibers present in our muscles. Right. So this myosin requires a type of enzyme for muscle contraction and that enzyme is let's look into the options the first option we have is actin second option trypsin third option atipase fourth option none of the above the enzyme needed for muscle contraction which is present in myosin is actually atipase now next fourth question the basement membrane is derived from, options are given as myosin, pachyderm, endoderm and fourth option epidermis and connective tissue. So what is basement membrane? So this basement membrane is actually present between the epidermis. Epidermis is the outermost layer of our skin, right? What you can touch when you touch your hand the skin that you can feel is actually the epidermis of our skin, outermost layer. Then uh, we have this uh, basement membrane. Okay. This is the basement membrane. And below this basement membrane, we have the connective tissue. So in other words, if we say the basement membrane is present between the epidermis and the connective tissue of our skin. So what is this basement membrane for? Basement membrane is actually giving mechanical support. It is giving strength to our 
epidermis and it is actually acting as a connection between epidermis and the connective tissues okay like it is connecting both epidermis and connective tissue because it is present between those two right so basement membrane is actually a connection between the epidermis and the connective tissues of our skin so the answer here should be epidermis and connective tissue fifth question we have here is dash are the blood cells that transport oxygen through the blood stream so the first option we have leukocytes second erythrocytes third option platelets and fourth option none of the above so we were talking in the first question right and the cardiac muscle fibers why is it working so continuously without getting tired it is because oxygen is being transferred through the lot of blood capillaries that are present around around it right so that oxygen is actually carried by that blood what is present mainly in our blood it is rbcs and it is rbcs which are transferring oxygen to different parts of our body rbcs are also known as erythrocytes okay na we have leukocytes here in the first option leukocytes are wbcs this is the wrong answer then erythrocytes are rbcs so this is the correct option rbcs is nothing but red blood cells wbcs are nothing but white blood cells then here platelets we have platelets are also known as thrombocytes okay and thrombocytes is not the answer and none of the above we have our answer here erythrocytes okay so the correct answer is erythrocytes next question so what the sixth question is asking the bone is a natural reservoir for first option we have fluorine second option water third option calcium and fourth option iron now we say when we were kids uh, our mothers used to say right you need to drink a lot of milk uh, that milk will make our bones strong why did they say that uh, because milk has uh, calcium in it it is rich in calcium and this calcium is what makes our bones strong uh, and because of this we grow tall uh, right milk is nothing but proteins again right so milk uh, is rich in calcium and that calcium is actually making our bones stronger why because our bones are majorly composed of calcium so more and more calcium will be there our bones will be stronger so naturally our bones are the natural reservoir for calcium seventh question what is it asking the soft gelatinous tissue found inside the bones is called first we have bone effusion second we have bone marrow third option we have bone abscess it seems fourth option none of the above so if you look at a bone let's draw a bone here okay for example this is a bone now if i cut it in a transverse section okay transverse means if you are cutting it in a horizontal direction so if we look inside this bone there is a gooey very jelly like substance present inside this is known as bone marrow and this bone marrow is necessary for the production of rbcs red blood cells okay so the soft gelatinous tissue found inside the bones is called as bone marrow next we have radiation does more damage to cancer cells when compared to normal cells because what these cancer cells do after they enter our body is uh, they will take the nutrition from our body and they will grow rapidly and uncontrollably without any boundaries to the other parts of our body 
so we tell cancer patients that they should go and uh, get treated with uh, radiation therapy this radiation therapy right so what is this radiation therapy this radiation therapy means so uh, it will use x rays and it will use gamma rays uh, and then it will use strong beams uh, of uh, protons and electrons uh, to destroy and uh, damage these cancer cells and these radiations uh, will only affect uh, those cells which are growing rapidly those cells which are growing uncontrollably and spreading rapidly to the different parts of our body only those cells uh, will be destroyed by this radiations from the radiation therapy and as we know cancer cells they spread like anything throughout our throughout our body continuously so they show rapid division so the answer should be cancer cells undergo rapid division next question we have is dash cells line the blood capillaries the first option we have alpha cells second option endothelial cells third option auxentic cells and fourth option none of the above these cells that line our blood capillaries are actually endothelial cells next tenth question we have antibodies are chemically dash options are option 1 fats option 2 fa foreign pathogens option 3 actins and option 4 proteins i told you in the earlier earlier question before right the antibodies are produced in our body by the immune response to kill the antigens which are produced by these pathogens right so these antibodies are actually proteins one type of complex proteins which will destroy the antigens which are present on the surface of these pathogens so the answer is proteins so that question was the last question that's it for today's video everyone hope you loved our video and understood the concept if you happen to have any doubts or you want to suggest something please comment down below and if you liked our video please like share and subscribe our channel it helps us out a lot and motivates us and encourages us to make such helpful lectures for you okay so then see you in the next class all the best for your preparation for all any exam that you are preparing hope you do well and come out with flying colors so see you in next video everyone till then goodbye